Uh, good morning, YouTube. It is 4.45 on this uh, Tuesday. It's Tuesday morning today. And today, for way too early for explanations, <coughs> excuse me, we are talking about space stations. I guess space stations don't make noise, do they? Way too early. Or that Higgs chromosome space the electrons like the magnetism all particles and momentum of receptors radiation our mathematics a solution asteroid what am I doing up um all right so for space stations we've had a history of space stations um, our stories and our movies have had space stations forever um, you know that at once this was it was this grand idea that we would somehow get from the earth to the space station and then from the space station onward to space and exploration and whatnot um, it hasn't really turned out that way space stations right now we we use them as sort of proof of concept so we can get into space we put sp experiments on space or space stations uh, but we don't really use it as, as a stepping stone or a launching pad or platform. Because, uh, like, you know, anytime we want to go to a comet or to an asteroid or to another planet, we just launch it from the Earth. We don't stop at the space station. It's, it's too complex. It, it introduces risk. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we pretty much, it, it's sort of like this lonely island out there um, so we've had space stations let's see our, our first space station the US launched uh, Skylab in 1973 uh, and it was a laboratory basically you know we, we did biological experiments we did all other experiments uh, we we used it to, to see what the effects of of long-term space exposure were in a human body. Skylab lasted about six years. Uh, I don't know for sure, but I imagine they just let the, the orbit decay and, and let it burn up in the atmosphere as it came back down to Earth. Uh, and then Russia sent up their space station Mir uh, in 1986. Uh, it was intended to last five years, but it lasted 15 years. Uh, yeah, stubborn Russians. No, they, they made a good product there. I mean, it, it looked really junky, but it, it lasted, you know, 15 years in space. That's, that's pretty incredible to do. Uh, you got to make sure there's no leaks, make sure no gases are, are escaping. Um, they also, I, I think... I mean, they did a lot of research on space in the human body. Um, I think most of our... Well, I, I don't know. I don't know if they've released that information to us, but uh, they gathered a lot of information there. They had experiments on Mir as well. Um, they when, when, when they decided to retire Mir, they did let it decay. I remember in the news um, all the stories of of the path that the that mirror would take when it came back down to earth and it burned up in the sky and uh, bits of it rained down on the ocean I think um, yeah and then we have the International Space Station which is what we have now uh, that thing launched in 19 uh, 98 1998 uh, and it's been up there ever since the International Space Station is a group effort. Um, countries like us, the U.S., uh, Canada, Japan, Russia, and the European Space Agency, which has a slew of countries. I'm not going to name them all. Uh, we all group together to form the ISS. And actually, there's a cool video on, on the building of the ISS. The ISS took a while to, to build up to what it is now. I'll post that video. Uh, it's kind of fun to watch. Oh, so let me recap. The the Skylab was like one module, one module, and then a um, a solar panel. The Mir station was more complex. It actually had um, uh, 
these these tunnels, not tunnels, these uh, uh, hallways or whatever. Uh, it was more than just one one structure. Um, and then the ISS is also like that. It, it's they you know they want to build it into a labyrinth, um, but its current uh, limit uh, service limit is 2020. Uh, you know, and it's got. Like, it's got the robotic arm from Canada, and the U.S. has put up a couple modules that link together. Russia has a module on there, maybe a couple modules that links. Uh, Japan made a module, or at least an external lab, uh, which is kind of fun, you know. Uh, lab space that exposes out to space, uh, because that's, you know, again, so we're doing experiments, and we're, we're trying to understand the, the effects on the human body. Um, and I think Europe... Uh, put up a couple modules as well. Right now, the only way to get there is through the Russian Soyuz capsule um, because we retired our shuttle fleet. Um, and so, not only do we have these capsules on there, we have a couple of Soyuz um, space vehicles, uh, sort of as like uh, emergency pods if we need to. They they stay there on the station right now, but if they ever need to evacuate the station, they run to these Soyuz capsules and then they come back down to Earth. Um, the U.S. is trying to develop our technology to get back into uh, to get back into the uh, huge cargo ferrying uh, department uh, because we don't have our shuttle anymore. Uh, Boeing is developing a vehicle. SpaceX is developing a well, the SpaceX has the Dragon capsule which is a smaller vehicle but we're trying to get a larger one so that we can put more uh, space station modules back up. We don't have a heavy lifter right now, so um, I think there's a third company as well. But um, let's see here. So the outlook. So so the the station retires are supposed the the service of the you know, the International Space Station is limited to 2020. We are trying to negotiate with our other partners to get it extended to 2024. Um, I understand that that costs a lot of money. We've got to replace parts. Uh, things wear out, die down, and again, you worry about uh, decompression or uh, gas leakage out of the space station. Um, maintenance maintenance is a is a bummer. Um, but I guess there's uh, well, we'll get get back to that. So we're in negotiations. Our our timetable ends at 2020. China wants to make their own space station. Um, they currently have a capsule up there right now. I forget what it's called, um, but they put it up in 2011. Uh, that was sort of their proof of concept, proof to themselves that they could put um, a capsule up in space. I don't know if they currently have astronauts on there right now. Um, in 2016, they want to launch a second capsule or space station vehicle uh, module up into space, uh, sort of another proof of concept. They want to be able to launch um, service items and uh, uh, things of that nature and they hope to have a fully operational space station by by 2020? Strange that the dates coincide. Um, and so now the latest news that's prompted this episode really is Russia's thinking about pulling out of the ISS uh, cooperation and they're thinking about making their own national space station again. Uh, they want to start launching modules in 2017. Um, yeah, they have a couple modules that they're in the middle of fabricating right now. I guess originally intended for the ISS but now they're wondering, you know, they're thinking about doing their own thing. Um, so, you know, space has always been this this badge of national pride. Uh, when the ISS went up, it was sort of a proof that the world could work together. Now we seem to be heading back towards the national pride thing. Um, I, you know, I'm not going to talk about politics. It's cool that the technology is there. Uh, it's cool that individual countries can can prove their technology um, and get space stations up there. I just hope we cooperate and, um, you know, 
because you know space space we need to we need to conquer together I think um, doing these individual things we're not gonna get very far but it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens in the next few years if China gets off the ground <laughs> so to speak uh, no pun intended if, if they if they do get their space station to work uh, if Russia goes it alone and gets another space station in there what happens to the International Space Station if we can extend it beyond 2020 um, yeah experiments galore uh, I don't know if we'll ever use it as a stepping stone it, it would be nice we would have to figure out things like space elevator or a cheaper way to uh, get into space besides rockets um, I think as long as we use rockets we're probably gonna launch from the ground and go direct instead of stopping off at a at a space station but uh, yeah so uh, I gotta go get to work you gotta go do whatever it is you do uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow Thank you for watching another episode of Way Too Early for Explanations. If you enjoyed it, please click on the like button down here. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I'll post links at the bottom of the description field. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you can do so by clicking on the subscribe button around here. If you want to get to my channel to see more videos, you can click on the link to Way Too Early for Explanations, or you can click on the eye chart that shows up in the upper right hand corner. Every morning I try to kick out more videos. Um, so stay tuned and come on back if you want to observe more early morning technobabble. Thanks again.